Week 7, Problem 2. Assume the motions and currents mentioned, uh, mentioned are along the x-axis and fields are in the y direction. Okay, that works, eh? That makes sense? Hmm, wonder why they didn't say x direction, y direction. Not important. Alright, so first question. Does an electric field exert a force on a stationary charged object? Alright, so the key equation here that will, you know, make everything here work, or not work, or determine if it works or not, will be force equals Q V cross B. Oop. Hmm. That's an awfully small capital B. All right. So this is going to be the meat and potatoes, the heart and soul of this question, of everything here. So does an electric field exert a force? Ah, okay. So I'm going to add a little bit to this guy, actually. I'm going to say plus E Q. There we go. So if we have a charged particle, it's going to have two possible interactions with it. First, one interaction will be with the electric field, and the other possible interaction will be with the magnetic field. So this says, does an electric field exert a force on a stationary charged objects? All right, so electric field, right there, check, stationary charged object. So we have an electric field and we have a charged object. Stationary, moving, doesn't matter. As long as we have electric field and a charged uh, particle, per these two these guys right here, then we have enough to make it work. So, yes, first guy is true. But I'm going to go with blue. Which doesn't make it any less true, I just enjoy blue. Does a magnetic field do so? Alright, so what they're saying here is they have a magnetic, does a magnetic field exert a force on a stationary charged object? No, because they have a velocity right here. And stationary specifically means no velocity. Therefore, charged object Magnetic field still require velocity. If velocity equals zero, then we have no magnetic field. So, no, or false. Does an electric field exert a force on a moving charged object? Yes. So we have an electric field, we have a charged object. It doesn't matter if it's moving or not, it still exerts a force. So, yes. Oh, oh, there we go. Does a magnetic field do so? All right, so we have charged object, magnetic field, and, and velocity. Therefore, we have both Q, V, and V. Therefore, yes, this time it does. Hmm. I feel kind of like it should be one of those like standardized tests where you fill in the whole bubble. I was like, ah, oh, did I fill this in enough? Is it dark enough? Is my pencil really number two? Does an electric field exert a force on a straight current carrying wire? Okay, at this point here, there... I don't know what you were taught about magnetic fields. I know that I went through, they did a terrible job teaching it. Um, there is a great video about why magnetic fields exist. And basically says that there's magnetic fields aren't really inherently magnetic. They're just a, um, they're just electric fields. Um, there's a video by Vertat, Ver, Veritasium. I think it's Veritasium. Shows, um, explains this far better than I ever could. So it's down in the comment section, right there. Go down, click it, don't worry. Just pause the video, I, I'll wait, I, not a big deal. I'll, I'll be here. Watch the video, it's like five minutes long and it explains it so much better. And if they didn't teach you this in class, then your teachers are dumb and stupid and they should have. Because this makes life so much easier. Just like conceptually wise, it's what, what it's for. All right, go. You back? Good. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of review, because you already watched the video, and talk about this guy. So this is actually a fairly complicated question, and I don't actually know the right answer, but I'm going to give you the answer that I think they are looking for. So you have your wire here, and you have electrons in this wire. So you have electrons, a whole bunch of electrons, hop, hop, negatively charged, and you have like a battery on one side. I'm going to say you have like a, you know, I don't know, a negative source over here, a negative producing thing, oh, this is going to be a negative producing thing, pushing negatives that way. And so you have a whole bunch of negatives moving this way, which makes them, um, due to uh, Lorentz contraction, makes them smaller, which means you have a higher density 
of negative electrons moving one way. So like, oh, that's good, that makes sense. So now you're going to have some magnetic force on that, or magnetic attraction. Well, with the wire, you're also going to have positive charges in there. And I don't know how exactly it matters or how it works, but the idea is that you're also going to have positive charges moving in the opposite direction. So you're going to have negative charges moving in the negative current direction, you're going to have positive charges moving in the positive current direction, and you're going to have contraction of both of them. So even though the density of each of the charges rises, they both rise together, so therefore it doesn't matter. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, and you can probably have someone super smart explain it. Long answer, short, they're going to, the answer they want here is no. Does an electric field exert a force on a straight current carrying wire? That's because you have both positive and negative charges together, and I think that the, both the positive and the negative are moving. Therefore, the effect you get from magnetism and Lorentz contraction are, are canceling each other out. So the answer I'm pretty sure they want here is, oh, uh, hmm. no. So for, for this, you're going to have the same density of um, for the positive and negative charges. And it's going to be the same thing for uh, magnetic field. So you no for this guy, no for that guy. Does a magnetic field do so? No. And what we're looking here is for, we're not looking for necessarily force, but net force. So you're going to have the electric field acting on the positive charges, but you're going to have them equally acting on the negative charges. So the electric field will cancel each other out. And for the magnetic field, um, you have the negative charges moving, but you also have the uh, positive charges moving. So in the end, I think it cancels out. Um, hmm. Actually, I might have to check up on this. You probably only have one guess, so I probably shouldn't lead you astray. But I'm going to say, hey, does the magnetic field do so? Actually, I'm going to be bold here, and I'm going to say that, yes, a magnetic field does exert a uh, force on a current carrying wire. So even though I think that maybe they're going to try and say maybe that the uh, positive charges move with it, I'm going to say just the electrons are moving, and therefore you have just the Lorentz contraction with the electrons, and therefore the magnetic force will have an effect on a current carrying wire. I'm going to say the electrons are moving using this formula. Charges moving, magnetic field. Yes, there is a force. So I'm going to say, does the magnetic field do so? And I'm going to say, yes. No, in all honesty, I'm not entirely sure what answer they're looking for. All right, so now we get back to the more obvious por portions. Does an electric field exert a force on a beam of moving electrons? Yes. Yes, they do. So, before, there's because there's electrons in a wire, the electric field exerted a force on the straight current carrying wire. It was just compensated by the protons that were also there. So this time, we don't have the protons and the net force will be positive because we have E times Q. So this guy is going to be yes. All right. Does a magnetic field do so? Yes. We have force equals QV cross B. Therefore, we're going to have a magnetic field there as well. So, safest way to look at this guy is go straight to the formula. And if you have charges relative to motion of magnetic field, you have a force. Or if you have an electric field and a charge, then you will also have a force. All right. And that's what you should do for number two. Good luck. See you on number three.